G'day, is the Chinese Grand Prix improved? Well, I'm going to answer that question in just a moment while this bloke behind me gets dressed. Well, my answer is yes. It's definitely improved on track. Boy, we've had some great racing this weekend and some very interesting on-track overtakes and incidents, keeping you guys at home watching telly pretty darn excited. Yes, we had two great races, but I think the off-track uh, action was probably more uh, what surprised me. The fans in the stand have gone to an extra level. Look, they're not um, Dutch or Italian fans yet, but they understand a lot more. They get excited when there's overtakes and things happening elsewhere around the track that they see on the screen and certainly when I wander the paddock and I see people running for drivers I think well this is very much like most races that we go to. I was impressed that we have a new grandstand at Turn 1 because going back five years ago that area was just general admission grassed area but yes we have a new grandstand admittedly it's not fully completed there's this large section here with a piece of signage over it but I imagine by next year that will be up and running. Has Zhou Guan Yu made a difference? Well, I think we'd have to say yes. He had two security guards this weekend. He's all over the media. I think China has really embraced him, certainly in the paddock after the event today. He was very hot property. F1 sees money in China because there's 1.3 billion people here. They've put on an extra 100 million followers of the sport, apparently, since we last raced here. And uh, whilst today was a sellout, I should point out that, uh, well, I was told this anyway by the British ambassador, that a sellout means that they don't sell all the seats. Um, they might only sell 80 or 90% of the seats, but whatever they put up for sale sells out. But that's why you see different empty seats all around those grandstands. And more on the subject of those fans, they sit in big blocks with different coloured outfits on. And it's impressive to see, certainly from the top of the pit building where I spent a lot of today's race photographing from. Now, those were the pros, and what about the cons? Yeah, the internet. I mentioned this before in one of my videos. Getting onto Google, Instagram, YouTube, it's all hard work. You, get a, you have to get a VPN and then that'll work for a day or so and suddenly that'll be kicked off. And um, I, I would love to see this country sort that out because it's a real pain in the bum. But I do love the fans that come back to the hotels at the end of each night, waiting for drivers. And this was last night at my hotel. Hello, guys. Hi. Hello. 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 I follow you on Instagram. Pardon? I follow you on Instagram. You are Sutton, right? No, I'm Kim. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're Sutton. This young lady is highly confused. She thinks I'm Mark Sutton, who is another F1 photographer. <laughs> Have a look. Go to Instagram. See, that's me, not Mark Sutton. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I follow you. Super. <laughs> no, that's no, fine. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I have no, I have no, no okay. Give that to Lando. Okay. Hello, Kim. Hello, mate. Good to see you. I watch your YouTube video. Thank you. You might be on one. You might be on one now. There's no doubt that is one of the most uh, fun parts of this job when you come back and see people in a foyer who are uh, waiting for their favourite driver and are so happy. Let's go back to the grid now and uh, not too many celebrities there, although we did have uh, Martin Garrix, DJ, uh, Eileen Gu was very popular both on the track and out in the paddock and this man was a standout, Yao Ming, ex-basketball player and a man mountain. What did he stand? 2.2 metres tall I think? He's uh, certainly towered above everybody else and was the focus on the grid. For the start I went up to turn two, it was uneventful, everybody got round, nothing like what happened in the sprint race. Then I headed up to the rooftop to shoot pit stops and then came down for Park Ferme. Oh, and I did get Yuki coming back on a motorcycle, was it a scooter? Um, yeah, sad way for him to end the day and Daniel Ricciardo also didn't finish, so um, not much joy down there at VCARB. But there was plenty of joy at Red Bull. Again, Max won, of course, it's his 58th win, I think I heard it said today. Uh, but all the interest was in what happened behind Max, with Lando Norris notching his best result, a second, and behind him Sergio Perez. Now, interestingly, Lando Norris decided to stop in pit lane, whereas the other two, Max and Checo, ended up on pit straight, which was what was supposed to happen. And also, Zhou Guanyu had a spot. Why? Well, he's the home champion here, so they had a special Zhou board. He parked behind the two drivers drivers, should have been three. Uh, Lando was a little confused when he got out of the car but was led out uh, eventually to the other two but all the interviews were done in pit lane. Afterwards in the paddock Lily and Alex were heading back from the 
the TV media pen having done their interviews and they've got a lovely photo of these two. Many of you guys seem to love this coupling. After these drivers do their TV media pen bit, they walk back to their garages and that's when their crew grab them for a little bit to video. But uh, as you can see here, they need somebody to lead the backwards walking videographer so he doesn't end up falling over because it's tricky going backwards holding a video camera. And at the press conference Tom Clarkson said look guys your water bottles are too prominent can you please put them between your legs or hide them. So both of those boys had to get rid of their water bottles or make them less conspicuous. And Lando um, decided he'd throw his phone across the floor to his PR officer. There will be no driver's drove video this week because you can't drive a car in this country if you rent one unless you sit a driving test. And certainly none of the drivers or trainers have time for that sort of nonsense. I'm out the back here in the what I call the Garden of Eden and it's just a beautiful spot to take photos. This morning I caught to Pierre Gasly out here, Esteban Ocon, along with a number of drivers, trainers. It's a real joy out here and we have nothing quite like it anywhere else on the calendar. Yesterday I came across these two women from the Aston Martin team and they were one by one reeling off the names of the sponsors on the back of the garage. I had a chat with them and asked why you doing that and they said they had six of these setups and they leapfrog each other so this one hasn't been used since Bahrain I believe and hence some of the sponsors have changed so they have to do a stock take of their sponsors and occasionally they find that sponsors who shouldn't be there are and vice versa and Mercedes also told me they have six different sets and they once again leapfrog race by race. Now a couple of this is a Chinese fan I was given very nice a couple of you have said, uh, has my opinion of this race changed any since five years ago? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, and I've been quite critical of the crowds, uh, well more so the atmosphere, in past years. It's been a bit dead, but that has not been the case this year. And if I go back to the race and the two park fermes I did, there were huge roars from the crowd at various incidents. So I think We've got ourselves some very excited fans who are here and really enjoying what's going on at the track. Look, it's a beautiful setup um, once you get out of the grandstand, but as I mentioned before, I'm not a fan of the paddock. This area, different kettle of fish altogether. Let's quickly talk fashion. I have never seen more Louis Vuitton shoes than I have in this place. They are so moneyed up. Well, certainly a lot of the people in the paddock are moneyed up. Fashion-wise with the drivers, what are we seeing? Yuki Tsunoda, I liked his outfit today. Lewis Hamilton, as always, looking sharp. And Joe Guan Yu surprised me a little bit with this outfit. Is the top local? Is that a Chinese thing? Now, have you seen the trophy for this year's race? Quite phenomenal. It's a, a laurel, like the old style wreaths that you used to give out to drivers and hang around their necks, which for memory was made of plants, wasn't it? Some sort. Well, this is a laurel wreath, but it is electronic and it lights up. It's supposed to um, pay homage to the dragon because this is the year of the dragon in China, well, everywhere in the world, and a dragon typically forms a circle. And we had a dragon out here uh, entertaining the crowds at Paddock Club today, but I don't think I've seen an F1 trophy that actually lights up. So it's a bit of a novelty. Well, now it's off to Perth and then a week off and then off to Miami for the next Grand Prix round six. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And for those of you not subscribed, here's your chance. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. And the other thing is that, what is the other thing, come on.